Hello, it's Jam Games here once again, and in this episode we are going to add the functionality to the player so he can run and switch lanes. So yeah, let's get started. First we want to go to the PP third person character. Let's open it and let's go to the event graph. Let's find some empty space and right click and add a event tick. Okay. Now from the event tick, what we want to do, we want to get the character movement. Let's get it to here. And now we want to add input vector. This. Let's connect it to here. And now let's add change this x to 1. Like that. Simple as that. Now let's compile and save. And now if we go back to the third person map and press play, you can see our player is running. But actually, now you can see the tiles spawning when we hit the location or the collision. But we want to actually set the uh, uh, spawn tiles amount to a little bit uh, larger number. So let's go to the blueprints and GM endless runner. And here on the begin play, we want to set these spawn tiles to, for example, to four. Okay, so now we are spawning four and we already have one. So we will have five uh, tiles when we start. So like this. And you can see there, when we hit a certain spot, it will spawn a new one. So we will basically never uh, run out of the road. And also, the ones before, uh, like behind me, will uh, despawn when we hit the next collision. We can, I can show you later how at that it really happens, but it will happen. So, okay, next thing, what we want to do. We want to add the functionality so the player can switch lanes. So first we want to go to the edit and to the project, project settings. Okay. And we want to go to the input under the engine. So input. And here on the action mappings, we want to add a new action mapping. Let's call this left. Okay. And now we can set this uh, value to whatever key we want. So I will set this to A. So, or you can also set it to the left, but I will set it to A. Okay, now let's add another action mapping. Let's call it right. Now let's map it to the D or maybe to the right key, but I will map it to the D, so D like that. Now we don't have to do anything here. It uh, automatically saves, so we can close this. Now let's go to the PP third person character. And what we want to do here is we actually want to, let's move this event tick a little bit further up so we get some more space here. So let's right click from here and let's search for the left. Let's scroll up. So action events left. Okay, and also we want to get the right one. So right and let's scroll up get the action events right, like this. So what we want to do with T's, we want to actually create a new variable first. So the variable should be called lane underscore index and the type should be integer. Okay, let's compile and save. And now we want to first get the lane index and we want to check if it's less or equal and if it's less or, or equal to zero, then we want to add a branch. Uh, let's keep the B pressed and left click. And from the pressed, let's get it to here and connect this to the condition. So if it's uh, zero or under, we don't want to do anything. But if it's not, then we want to get the lane index once more. And we want to get from it and minus minus, so decrement in the chair and connect it to the false. Okay, simple as that. Now, on the input action right, we want to also get the lane index. And we want to check if it's greater or equal to two, because we will have the lane zero, one, and two. So the one is the middle one. Actually, let's click this lane index. And let's change this default value to one. So this should be one at the default. So compile. And let's actually save all because this has been crashing a lot. 
And now let's add a branch, B and left click. Let's move it to here. Let's connect it to pressed and connect this to the condition like that. Let's actually move this a little bit further up like that. And now the next thing, what we want to do is we want to get the lane once more here and we want to get from it and plus plus. So increment integer. Let's connect it to the false and we are basically done here. So let's compile and say now when we go to the third person map and play, we press right. Actually, how stupid, <laughs> we are not done. We haven't had the functionality to actually move the lines, but yeah, sorry, I'm stupid. <laughs> so now we actually want to create a new function. Let's call it set lane location. Okay, let's open it. Uh, on the set lane location, what we want to do, we want to actually first get the capsule component and we want to get get world location. Let's align this, control uh, Q. Let's split this. We want to get the Y uh, value and we want to check if it's equal. Actually, we want to check if it's not equal. Sorry, not equal. And uh, now from this value, we want to get the select node. So this at the bottom, we can actually make it as favorite, favorite, favorite. I don't know how to pronounce favorite. Yeah, because we want to use it a lot. So let's select it. Okay, and let's move it to here under this. Now, what we want to do here, we want to get the lane index here and connect this to the index. And let's add a new pin. Now we have three of these, so option zero, one, and two. So this is a lane zero, so it should be minus 200, and one should be zero, and two should be plus 200, like that. And now here, if these values, so our location and the lane location are not uh, the same value, let's add a branch, so P and left click, and let's get from here. So if these are not the same value, then we want to set them to be same value, but we don't want to set them straight away. So it will, he will, or the otherwise he will teleport to the other lane. So we will have to add some little code there, but okay. Let's get the capsule component once more here. And we want to set world location. And get from the true. Okay, let's actually move this a little bit further like that. Let's add a reroute to here, double click. And let's move it up here and select this and Q to align. Okay, so now let's also get from here, get world location. Let's get it to here and let's split it. And also let's split this. Now let's connect the X and set values. Let's actually move this a little bit up like that. And now from the Y, we want to F interp interp two F interp two like that. Okay, and now for the actually we can move this a little bit for closer like that. So for the current value, we want to connect uh, get world location Y value there. Let's actually move this further up so it aligns. And to the target, we want to set, uh, connect this from the select, like that. And for the delta time, we want to get world delta seconds. Let's move it to here. And to interspeed, let's make it like eight. You can set it later to whatever you want. So let's compile and save all. So now we're basically done here. Now let's go to the event graph. And here on the event tick, we want to add this settle and location function after this. Or actually, if, um, yeah, we want to set it to here. Okay, let's connect this to there. Now let's compile and save all once again and go to the third person map. Now when we play, we should be able to change lanes. As you can see, we can do it. And if you think he's changing the lanes too fast, uh, we can change the, let's go back to the pp-turperson character 
and to the satellite location. You can change the interrupt speed to, for example, 5. Now if we play, yeah, and if we're jumping, he also can still change the lanes. Actually, we can jump. So why is that? I think we have the, oh, so we have this enchant uh, input action here. We don't want to use that right now. So let's delete that. Also, let's delete the stop jumping. Okay, let's go back to the project settings and to the input. Let's add a new action mapping. Let's call it jump. And here, let's select the key that we want to bind it to. And let's make it space. Okay, now we can close this and go back to the third person character. And we can right click and search for jump. And the jump is here. Input action event jump. Actually, we can delete this uh, text from here and connect this jump to the pressed. Okay, let's compile and save all. Uh, let's go and try. Yeah. Now you can see he can jump and switch lanes. Okay. So the player movement, is, the base part of it is basically done. So on the next video, we will actually create the, make the camera so it will not follow the player when we are jumping. And also when we're switching the lanes, the camera will not switch to exactly this position. It will go like half, halfway, like in, uh, or maybe we can make the camera so it doesn't move at all, but you can actually choose what, what you want to do, but I will show you the both ways. So yeah, hope you liked the video. If you uh, enjoyed, please click the like button and subscribe for more. And see you on the next one. Bye.